can see everywhere there's a part of the ring broken back and I could see it very well there's a joke and I know it Hi, I'm David Johnstone. I've been working with Elton John for 25 years. And uh, 25 years ago, this is the first thing I played with him, Mad Men Across the Water. Originally, uh, Mick Ronson and some other guitarists were called in to do it. For whatever reason, it never worked out. So I was called in to do it, along with uh, Chris Spedding and Herbie Flowers and some great players. And when Elton wrote the song, he asked if I could come up with a, a riff as an intro, and this is it. Now, as you can hear, I'm using uh, quite a lot of harmonics. What we did, uh, Gus Dudgeon, the producer, took the each harmonic and ran like back or echo between them so that you got a beautiful phasing effect, which you can't hear right now because we're not using that actual effect. Normally when you're using harmonics, you use them in uh, single notes uh, at the octave. Uh, for example, here's an E harmonic and here's the open E string. Now the song Mad Men was in A minor. So I was able to employ a f almost a full chord of harmonic, like... And then again, at the seventh fret, which gives a different inversion, again... So run the whole thing together. And then keep that ringing, if you can. Raised in rich man, hardly a hero. Just someone his mother might know. Very clearly a case for conflicts and classics. To tease both who should have bleed. Chances in life for little good cowboys. Should I make my way out of my home in the world? Oh, cherries and meal.
Um, Captain Fantastic was written on a, a voyage, in fact, on, a, on the SS France. Uh, Elton and I were on a, a trip from London to New York with our respective pals, and we had an hour every day to rehearse. Uh, so we were decided to write some of the songs for the album Captain Fantastic uh, on the boat, and we were sandwiched between a, a magician and an opera singer, I think it was. And uh, so it was only acoustic guitar and piano that we had to work with. So the first song was Captain Fantastic, and I came up with this little country-ish kind of riff. Uh, we used a lot of picking styles in the early Elton stuff uh, on acoustic guitar. Another song was uh, Texan Love Song which uh, I believe was banned on the radio because of its lyrics and stuff. Big deal at that time. Anyway, uh, I employed kind of a claw hammer style, which is uh, this kind of thing. The idea is to keep your, your thumb going on the, with the bass line. other fingers do the syncopation so it's so this was a style that was being used mainly by folk guitarists at this point which I basically was when I joined Elton in fact uh, I was hired first as an acoustic player and uh, it was only when they let me plug in my guitar that I realized how mad I really was and uh, Texan love song is going to be sang today by our wonderful Billy Trudell and Bob Birch, better known as Equinox. So again, the claw hammer style with the pick. <laughs> and the other thing we did that was interesting on that, that song was uh, we mic'd up my left foot as we were doing the take, because the guitar was the only thing on the, the original take. So, you know, I had to do this type of thing all the way through, and then play the Clawheimer. trick we used to employ in the old days 
with Elton was uh, open tuning, which is basically taking the, the guitar and tuning it to an open chord. Uh, I used to do this a lot in the, the folk days, and again, it's another trick used by mo mostly folk and blues artists. Uh, a good tuning is the G, open G chord, which not a lot of people use uh, that I know of, other than myself, because it has two Gs at the bottom of the chord to give it a, a really rich sound. So to give you an idea, instead of the guitar being E, A, D, G, B, E, we tune the bottom E string up to G, hoping not to break it. The A string down to a G. And the top E string down to a D. Sometimes when you do that, because of the tension on the strings, the other ones, the other strings will go out of tune. So you have to be very delicate and go back over and compromise a little bit. Okay? So anyway, again, it's G, G, D, G, B, D, giving you a nice fat open chord. Now when I can get that properly in tune. We use this tuning on such songs as uh, Hercules. And again, another harmonic at top. I guess you can see I was quite fond of harmonics. In the days. Another interesting thing about open tunings with guitar, uh, obviously that means you have to adapt to your, your, your chord positions, uh, otherwise you're in for some nasty surprises. But um, it means you have to, it's like relearning another, another style of guitar. So for example, you have your open chord, and you can obviously just make bar chords with a single finger, or you can make minor chords by doing an almost Paganini-esque thing with your little finger like this. Okay. Uh, another nice way to get some open sounds are just by doing that's giving you like a C to a G all over the, the G bass. And you're just really playing an A, a minor seventh chord shape to get that effect. And again, the, the harmonics sound especially rich when, you, when you're in open tuning. Another uh, song we used that to pretty good effect was called High Flying Bird. And the intro went something like this.
The song Rocket Man was uh, originally in the key of G minor. That's where it starts. Uh, we wanted to get a really open sound for the chorus, as regards, you know, as against the, the contrast of a very stark verse. So uh, I decided to open tune the guitar to the chord of B flat, which is kind of weird because it's not a standard thing that really anybody else that I know does either. Um, so what you have is an F at the bottom on the low string. Then the A would be to a B flat. Then the D down a B flat. Your G string down to F. And then B flat for the second string, down again. And the top string would be D instead of E. So if you have to rewind that real fast, to, you know, I'm sorry. It'll be also in the booklet coming with this. B flat chord. So that when the chorus of Rocket Man came in, it automatically kind of just spread out into a, quite a nice big thing like. Now these, these chord shapes again have to be adapted a little bit from, from the last tuning because of the different tuning of the strings. Uh, and here I'm, I'm basically just fingering the first fret of the E string with my first finger and then the second fret of the third string with my second finger to get this B flat, E flat type of thing. nice thing to do with open tunings is to play around with the kind of modal aspect, which is... You know, keep it all around the same chord, and you can get very kind of cosmic with it, but it's also a very effective, very beautiful kind of sound. By using minimum of effort, in fact, two fingers right now, uh, at the octave, at the 12th fret, again, uh, on the, the first string and the third string, you can do just by playing kind of in thirds. This is uh, also an effect we used on uh, the song Curtains, which is obviously on the Captain Fantastic album, obviously. And the song had some nice harmonics and some nice uh, of these chord shapes from the E flat to the B flat. In the song uh, Island Girl, we also use this tuning uh, because we wanted, again, to have a big sound when it got to the chorus. Uh, the song was in, I believe, D minor, which in this shape, in this tuning, makes you play this shape, which is not too healthy. <laughs> So the verse was in uh, D minor, and the chorus was in B flat. And so on. 
as you might have noticed that the minor shape here was again by using this fourth finger, your pinky really pressing over like three strings, the top three strings, to give you the minor seventh kind of chord. <laughs> This guitar is an ovation long neck, uh, so-called because it's got a longer scaled neck, and the whole guitar is tuned a step down, so that the E string becomes D, and the whole thing you know, follows down. One whole tone down is tuned, so it's got a deeper tone. Um, this tuning I'm going to demonstrate is taking the B string down to A, so that your second string B goes down to a, giving you again that kind of modal chord sound, which again makes for some, some other interesting shapes you normally wouldn't be able to use. And like some very country-ish sounding stuff. Also, it gives you the uh, possibilities of making it really sing in the bottom end. friction, so-called because there's a lot of friction involved with the fingers and the fretboard, a lot of hammering on and off, which is this type of thing, and hammering on is so mix the whole thing up, plus this interesting uh, banjo-esque kind of thing. It also involves you pulling real hard with your first finger. Taking almost from a minor to a major.
is a mandolin. Uh, it's tuned the same as a violin, which basically is E, A, D, G, from top to bottom. We used it on a lot of Elton John songs, uh, just as a blanket, in, you know, as a sound quality, tucked behind different things. And also, it was quite prominent in a few th songs, in Captain Fantastic and a song called Mona Lisa's and Mad Hatters. We used it in the, the classic Venetian style. The <laughs> Makes you want to go out for a pizza. So that was that style. Mainly, I, I prefer the country style and uh, country and Irish, if you'd like to call it that, because my musical heritage is being from Scotland, uh, jigs and reels, that kind of thing. Uh, we used it on the song Holiday Inn, which was again on the first session that I ever did with Elton. To pretty good advantage, we used mandolin, uh, sitar, and acoustic guitar. When we were recording Holiday Inn in the studio, uh, Elton was having a bit of a problem with how to start the song. And I came up with the idea, well, why don't you just start it without any intro, just come straight in cold. So that's actually what we did. And maybe it, in some small way, influenced him saying, who's that guy? Maybe I should get him in my band or something. So this was the idea, just come straight in with the song. Now, when you hear Billy singing that with uh, this idea, then you get an idea of how it's supposed to be. Boston at last and the plane's touching down. The hostess's hand and the hot towels around. From a terminal gate to a black limousine. It's a ten Ride to the holiday I'd like to play you something else uh, on mandolin, but I'm thinking of playing you something instead on mandola, which is a bigger version of this. In fact, it's tuned an octave up. So let's move on to the mandola. This is the mandola, which is tuned, as I said, a whole octave down from the mandolin. Uh, it's always great to have a, an arsenal of different instruments because you, know, you never know what you're going to need in, in the studio. It was especially helpful when we were a small band uh, with Elton, just with four of us in the band. I'm not saying I don't like the, the new band. I love the new band, Job Security. But it was great in the old days just having all this, this uh, stuff to play with, the sitar and uh, mandolin, banjo, because uh, I added a different color to, to all the stuff that Elton was doing. And he's very into that thing, that very folk thing, which helped my position. This piece I'm going to play you is called Lark in the Morning. It's an Irish piece. Here we go. <laughs> Move on to the mandocello now, which is even lower version of this. The mandocello, even larger, even lower. C G D B. My God, this is my little girl's favorite piece for this reason.
is the uh, sitar from India. As you can hear, it's got a really nice droning quality about it. I've used it on several of Elton's records, including uh, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, Island Girl, Blues for Baby and Me. We've, we've used it on a lot of things, not necessarily in the forefront. We used it a lot in context of, uh, as a, another part of a chord, as a texture in the chord, because uh, it has such a great tone. Also, you have the ability with the sitar to bend the notes because uh, the fret board itself is scalloped. It has sympathetic strings joining all the time, and it has a little rhythm section at the top of the instrument, kind of like a banjo. So the idea is to keep the rhythm section going and play the melody with the upstrokes all played with this silly little pick ranger finger, which is probably stopping my blood circulation right now. It's very much played in that style. Upstring, upstrokes for the melody and the downstrokes for the rhythm. We have uh, George Harrison to thank for this kind of thing because he obviously brought it to the forefront with uh, his work with it with the Beatles. And uh, we've used it a lot and it's just another part of the, the, the sound of, of Elton really. So now I'm going to go out and have a curry. Bitches Back was a very fun tune to record. Uh, we used the, the tuning that I mentioned earlier on the acoustic, the G tuning, which features the two Gs at the bottom, and then the D, G, B, and D again, so that you get open chord. This is a, a similar chord to, to a lot of the stuff that Keith Richard would use from the Stones. And Ellen's a huge Stone fan, so he would always kind of want me to, can, can you take that a little dirtier? You know, he's always liked the, the, the filthy aspect. And in fact, he came up with the idea for the intro of Bitches Back. He wrote the song, and then he said, can you come up with something that's kind of digga 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 dig? So I did. It was kind of like this. And then we added more guitars doing the same thing, that sound is fairly clean, a little harsh and fairly clean, so we added something even more dirty, kind of like this. And then just to really screw things up, we made it dirtier still. So by now we had maybe six guitars playing this figure. The last ones being this one. The verse was kind of uh, a country vibe again. Like, I was just a bad. That's that harmonic again. This time played with a kind of strident little choppy thing. As you can see, when I play bar chords, 
I'm adding a suspension with my second and third finger so that for the G chord and then the C following in it and then a C chord with an F over it by using these shapes you can do just about anything in this tuning And again, for the minor chords, our old friend. And then uh, the harmonics obviously come in. This kind of tuning and approach is also real good for, for blues playing and slide playing. Uh, there was another song we did called Stinker, which isn't that well known, but it was a lot of fun to play from the Caribou album. And it features some slide stuff, but also intermingled with regular fretting stuff, like this. <laughs> Also, we used to use uh, the slide as like a cosmic effect. Uh, for example, on Rocket Man, we'd use the slide for uh, after he sings, I'm a Rocket Man. You get this kind of. Sounds like a little too much acid in those days or something. But that's the kind of thing we would use slide for, not only the blues thing, but also for an effect. Just before we get away from the open tuning aspect, uh, on the last record of Elton's called Made in England, from 95, I guess, um, we did a song called Pain. Now, it's very similar in, in a way to Bitches Back and Saturday Night's Alright for Fighting, in that it's got these kind of suspended open tuning chords. And this one is in a different tuning, it's in the tuning of E flat which you're going to have to look up in the booklet that comes along with this, because I couldn't tell you what notes it, it entails. But the, the riff goes like this. Elton came up with an idea for a counter riff to go with that, which was... Again, with the open tuning sound, you get that drone that seems to go on forever. So I hope that helps uh, you understand a little bit about open tuning. <laughs> the slide can be a lot of fun when you raise the action of the whole guitar so that you don't get a lot of that fret noise uh, when you're sliding around. So I first came up with the idea of using a pencil, believe it or not, many years ago. And to this day, I still use a pencil because it just is the right sound. What can I say? Maybe it's the HB or something. I don't know. But it's the perfect uh, angle for me to work with. Now, look, many slide players do raise the action of their guitars at the nut. I prefer to do it up here just because it, it was something I did a long time ago, and it was a freaky thing that worked. So. 
Let me illustrate a little about how it gives you that cleaner, more sustaining type sound. <laughs> A, a good way of also of getting a, a clean slide for things that maybe you want to be uh, a little Hawaiian sounding. We, we did a song called Island Girl and uh, we used this effect with the, the intro of the song which was just kind of Bugs Bunny-ish but that's uh, again using the old pencil method. So if you uh, ever try this I want some royalties. Uh, we also use this sound in, in Rocket Man when we do the song live, coupled with a bit of echo to again give that kind of ethereal effect. Again, by using this pencil effect, you eliminate the, the fret noise and uh, you can just get down. The song uh, Saturday Night's Alright for Fighting, um, originally Elton wrote it in Jamaica and we, we couldn't do it because they only had one microphone in the studio. So we ended up back in, in France where we recorded the first couple of band albums. And uh, when it came to doing the song, we couldn't get the vibe quite right. So Ellen suggested maybe he should jump around the studio singing it. And uh, myself and Dee Murray and Nigel Olsen would just play it like a three-piece power band, which is what we ended up doing. So I had to come up with an intro for it. And this is what I came up with for Saturday Night's Right for Fighting. Now I get a lot of questions normally about, about this, uh, this riff because uh, it's so simple but it sounds like there's a lot more going on than there actually is. Um, this is our, by the way, our BFG sound, which we call our Big Fat Gibson sound from the old Les Paul. But in actual fact, all I'm doing is barring the, the, the 12th fret with my first finger over the first three, three or four strings, playing a G. And then over that, I'm playing a C note and an A note. So you get... And then when you take it down to the F position, and then all the way down to the C. So, as it is with most things, it's a lot easier than it actually sounded. Here's the whole intro. When we came to the chorus of that song, um, I used a Fender Champ amp for that turned all the way up. Most people are disgusted when they hear this. They, they feel sure that it must have been a Marshall turned up to 15. But it was actually six Fender Champs, uh, one after the other. We just kept on adding guitars. And the figure I was playing was very Chuck Berry-esque. <laughs> And for the solo of the song, Saturday Night, we wanted a chordal thing rather than a, a note kind of, you know, complex thing. We wanted it to be solid and chunky. So we ended up with this. <laughs> now, 
Then over that piece, we added some more guitars playing a higher inversion of the same thing, but with that different little inversion thrown in. And I think in all, we put about 10 guitars on that, that one track, which for 1973 was quite a lot of guitars. I've always used Leslie cabinet quite a lot. Now, Leslie's normally associated with, with organ uh, to get that swirling speaker sound. Um, I used it on a song called All the Young Girls Love Alice. I think that was one of the first times we used Leslie. And this was the kind of effect we got from it. <laughs> The, the way we achieved that was I played kind of a, a B-flat minor chord at the top of the neck here and then added a weird A-flat note which gave it this kind of screaming quality and then faded it in with a volume pedal. All the time the Leslie cabinet was on the fast speed. So this is the effect we got. <laughs> and so on. Uh, other Leslie effects are normally a lot more gentler, a lot more kind of sparkly. Um, we use it on Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me, for example, um, for a much cleaner kind of effect. I wanted to change to the Strat to give you an idea of how it would sound on this guitar. It sounds a little cleaner and a little sparklier, so kind of like this. <laughs> nice, gentler kind of sound approach for that. We used uh, Strat a lot, obviously, as most bands did. Um, in fact, my first big influence was uh, a guy called Hank Marvin from The Shadows, who everybody idolized back in the kind of early 60s. In fact, when the Beatles and Stones came along, as much as they were so innovative and original, I was kind of sad because Hank was, I thought, a better player than a lot of those other guys. Uh, as it is, I'm a giant Stones fan now, obviously. In fact, I just saw Charlie the other day in a restaurant in London. And we are good pals. So uh, Hank, anyway, was my, my major influence in the early days because his style was so clean. Uh, and I, I think it was similar to what uh, the Ventures were doing in, in the USA. They kind of did like stuff like the um, Apache and stuff like that. All that was and foot tapper. that kind of corny stuff, but I loved it at the time. The piece, uh, Funeral for a Friend, originally I played on the, the Les Paul. Um, I'm going to play it for, on, for you on the Steinberger right now uh, for the simple reason that Rick Salazar is my tech and he's been working so hard all day tuning about eight million guitars. Uh, this, the reason I, I like to use a lot of guitars live is just for a different sound and different effects and, and it's kind of fun. So this is a uh, the way we did Funeral for a Friend. It started off with guitar harmonics behind Elton's piano thing. Now you can tell it's almost that violin kind of effect.
after that, it goes into kind of a, a heavier segment, which with the aid of my foot pedal, I'll show you basically what it does. funeral for a friend slash love lies bleeding was um, we did it all in one take it was a long piece it was maybe I don't know about 15 minutes the whole thing but we did it all in actually in one take it wasn't the question of like nowadays where you have the luxury of stopping and cutting in whatever you want it was actually live in the studio um, one of the middle sections of the song had this this fast little run-up in it which went <laughs> When played at the proper speed is and slow. And our bass player, Dee Murray, basically just slid up the neck of the guitar rather than playing any significant notes, but it worked really well. He, his part was. So together you got this kind of mad B thing happening. Uh, that piece goes into a song called Love Lies Bleeding, which has got kind of a fun guitar lick on it. that originally we used the first guitar that I've just played this kind of sound and then we double tracked it and slowed the tape down a little bit very speed the tape so that you'd get almost kind of an out of tune effect now you can do that nowadays with you know the aid of chorus pedals and all kind of automatic double tracking uh, but for us in those days in the heady days of the mid 70s it was kind of amazing to hear the sound for the first time it was like if you get one regular tune guitar and one very very slightly out of tune you got this wonderful effect. Uh, we sometimes get the similar kind of effect with, with Leslie by doing uh, this. <laughs> kind of like that. And then uh, for the lead breaks in the middle of the song, it's kind of a nice little piano thing with flutes in the background. And at the end of that section, there's kind of a Godzilla guitar thing that comes in, which is like uh, basically just fifths on the guitar. <laughs> And then there was a line that went over the top of that, which was... Well, I've enjoyed bringing you some of these ideas and influences that uh, I've brought to Elton's music over the years. Obviously, it's difficult to, to do any more than we've done in the 
time given, but nevertheless, I've enjoyed it. I'd like to thank Rick Salazar for doing a great job of teching and changing strings and tuning instruments. And also Bob Birch on bass, Billy Trudell on vocals. And good luck with whatever you're doing. Rock on. Rolling. <laughs>